Hi, I'm Benjinas Jenkins, Behavioral Health Director with C.W. Williams Community Health Center. For over 41 years, C.W. Williams Community Health Center, the first federal qualified health center in Mecklenburg County, continues to be an anchor and force in the community that is committed to the highest quality of premier and preventive health care services and health education. Our mission is to improve the spiritual, physical, and psychosocial status to the residents of Mecklenburg and surrounding counties by providing access to the highest quality, comprehensive family health and auxiliary services to all, regardless of their inability to pay. Healing Our Communities, Heart, Mind, and Soul. C.W. Williams provides services in premier care, dental, behavioral health, HIV specialty and HIV testing, pediatrics, medication management, holistic acupuncture and massages. We have an on-site pharmacy and we provide transportation to individuals in our community who need assistance with their appointments. Our commitment to community wellness is a priority. So we are excited to be a part of Loving Me, Mind, Body, and Soul Mental Health Symposium. Let's look at mental exercise. When we want to become more physically fit, we work our bodies, sometimes concentrating on specific muscle and muscles and areas, such as our biceps, our arms and quads. We can do the same with our mental fitness. Research states there are five main mental muscles that all work together to help us increase our emotional intelligence, respond to situations with more resilience, build stronger interpersonal relationships, and strive in all parts of life. The five muscles of mental fitness, accountability, helpful beliefs, self-assessment, holding multiple perspectives, calming your physiology, accountability, owning your part in the results, and recognizing other potential contributors. So not blaming others. Helpful, helpful beliefs. Helpful beliefs can show up in three different ways. Collaborative lens, for example. I win, you win approach. Maybe everyone doesn't get everything they want, but they walk away feeling heard and included. Or looking at it from a lens of possibility. This allows you to take a step back and temporarily set, temporarily set aside any problems and doubts and give yourself the freedom to imagine an ideal outcome. Or looking at it from opportunity lens. This is a time of conflict when you can ask yourself, how can I find an opportunity on whatever situation I faced? Then self-assessment. The goal of self-assessment is to better manage and regulate your emotions and response to triggers. Like if you're going through um, not feeling well and you have some disappointment, some anger and anxiety and you have a headache. So being able to regulate that, 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 that feeling of that knot in your stomach, that self-regulating of your emotions, holding multiple perspectives. So appreciating and allowing that there, there are differences of opinions. So you have the ability to understand and consider perspectives that are not always in line with yours. Calming your physiology. Quickly changing your physical and mental state when you're feeling triggered. One way to do this is just taking a deep breath and breathing. We underestimate the power that we have over our physical state when we are in distress or upset in some way and how to alter and how to take a moment and alter those feelings. That takes us into our topic, coping and managing our emotions. The wheel of emotions. So we go through a lot of emotions depending on what we have going on. Uh, anger, fear, coping with grief, just to name a few. So emotion regulation is our ability to effectively manage and respond 
to an emotional experience. This involves a coherent relationship with the self, especially effective communication between our body, mind, and feelings. So it's really important when we have those emotions and wanting to calm our physiology and taking a deep breath. Breathing is so important because it helps us communicate, it helps us relax, it helps us calm the chemicals that's going on in our in our brains and, and help us regulate our emotions. Um, it is important to it's important to have the ability to accurately detect and evaluate clues related to um, our reaction to stress. So emotional regulation is very important um, in dealing with our emotions. Another reason uh, emotional regulation is so important is because it affect, our emotions affects our behavior. So the ability to experience and express emotion is important. Emotion plays a key part in our daily reaction and influences our logic and productivity, can continue unhealthy cycles. It determines how we treat ourselves and others. So when we are regulated or when we are in tune with our, with our emotions, we have access to important knowledge that helps us with decision-making, relationship success, day-to-day -day interaction, and self, um, self-care. While emotions can have a helpful role in our daily life, it can also take a toll on our emotional health and interpersonal relationships when they start to feel when we start to feel like we're out of control. So again, a great example to why self-regulation is so important is because it does impact our daily behaviors. Approaches and coping strategies. Coping skills are thoughts and actions we use to respond to events that may cause us to stress. So one problem focus coping that involve handling stress by facing it head on and taking action to resolve the underlying cause. It is very important to take deep breathing, deep breaths um, and breathe when working through your problem focused coping strategies. This is, the, this is for those individuals who want to like, look, I'm gonna address it right now. Um, this is the problem and handling the situation within, in the moment. Uh, emotional focus coping involves regulating your feelings and emotion response to the problem and instead of addressing it head on. So this would be a coping strategy for that individual who takes that moment to, to just really self-regulate, um, take time to work with it, work, work, their, work through their emotions within and not addressing it right in that moment. So those would be two different um, techniques. Problem-focused coping, I'm right in it right now. Let me address this emotion in an immediate situation. Emotion-focused coping, let me take a step back, focus on me taking those deep breaths and handling it within. So some ways to handle the emotional coping techniques uh, would include uh, meditation, uh, taking that time to acknowledge and sit with all your thoughts and experiences, uh, even the difficult ones. One of the key goals of meditation is mindfulness. This is recognizing the thoughts as they come up, accepting them and letting them go without without sitting, without stewing over them or, or judging yourself um, for having for having those um, those thoughts. Um, journaling it is a great way to sort through and come to terms with challenging emotions. Sometimes writing it down, um, your feelings, no matter how messy or complex they are, is the first step in working through those feelings. Positive thinking. Optimism won't solve problems alone, but it can, can boost your emotional uh, wellness. 
It is important to understand that optimism, uh, to be optimistic, I'm sorry, and, and positive thinking does not involve ignoring your problems. It is giving you challenges in a, in a positive spin and finding joy to help you get through the emotion. So, so thinking positive. Forgiveness. It's easy to focus on your feelings of injustice or unfairness when someone wrongs you, um, does something that's unkind, or, or puts you in your feelings. But most of the time, we, 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 we cannot do anything to change the hurt that has been sustained. So in other words, the damage has been done. So, so there's nothing else we can do but start to let go and move forward. So starting by having by forgiveness. You know, they say forgiveness is not for the other individual, it's for us. So starting with forgiveness so we can move forward. And reframing. When you reframe a situation, you're looking at it from another perspective. This can help you consider a bigger picture instead of being stuck in the little details. As difficult or unpleasant or hard the details may be sometimes, reframing will let us look at it differently. And then talking about it. It's a good idea to talk about your feelings with others involved in the situation. Um, they may not even realize sometimes that they had an impact on uh, on you unless you tell them. So communicating your your diff um, your difficulties won't always get them resolved, but as an approach to resolution, does exist. And how and how can you come to it together? And of course, working with the therapist, a trusted mental health professional, can help you manage emotional distress by offering guidance on any of these um, strategies. So definitely if at any time needing any support, uh, a, a, a mental health professional can help you um, in that and help you and, and help you move through to your healing process. Grief is a universal experience. And there's no right or wrong way to to go about it. Even if it feels difficult at the moment, grieving may become less intense with time. So developing coping skills for grief and other um, difficult moments may help you manage your emotions and step into a pathway of healing. In some cases, especially if you feel that you're having a difficult time overcoming challenges, please reach out to a mental health counselor that may be able to help. One coping strategy or technique doesn't work for every person. It's not one fit all. So here are five steps to release emotional blocks. One, allow yourself to feel emotions. Two, listen to what you're feeling without judgment. Three, acknowledge that you're feeling, your feelings are valid. Four, meditate daily. Step away from the noise of the world. Five, express your emotions through journaling or movement. Exercise, taking a walk. Owning our story and loving ourselves through the process is the bravest thing that we'll ever do. So give yourself some grace. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself, you're listening to your body, and if you need any assistance or need to reach out to a counselor or seek additional support, please make sure that you do so. And again, C.W. Williams Behavioral Health Service is here to serve your community. Thank you all so much.